I grew up in a Swedish community in the Midwest, quite a closed and conservative community. So when I went off to university, it was a shock to me. I wasn't prepared for the big wide world. And I ended up joining a fundamentalist Bible group, which persuaded me to leave university before completing my studies and to go and evangelize the world. <coughs> I sat at the feet of Hal Lindsey, a well-known Christian Zionist leader, and under him, I learned the basic tenets of Christian Zionism. Number one, the Jews are the chosen people. Number two, the state of Israel needs to be re-established. Which happened in 1948. Number three, Jews from around the world must go and live there. Which is also happening, and is encouraged financially by Christian Zionists who donate funds to the settlements. Number four, the Jewish temple which was destroyed in the first century needs to be rebuilt on its original site in Jerusalem. Which is where Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque are today. And when all these prophecies have been fulfilled, there's going to be the rapture and Armageddon. By that, we mean that Bible-believing Christians, those who've been born again, will be taken up in an instant to be with the Lord. That's the rapture. When the seven years, while the seven years of Armageddon, happened down on earth, the big war of all wars. And in that struggle, led by the second coming of Jesus Christ, all of the Jews will either be destroyed or converted instantly to Christianity and the Christian forces will prevail. Which is why the fundamentalist Christians do not want a Middle East peace solution, because the turmoil in the Middle East confirms that we are in the last days. Well, look at what's happening with Iran. That could be it. That could spark the end of the world. So they're provoking it. It's also why they're not interested in the environment. In the Kyoto Treaty, why should we worry? It's the end days. Let's enjoy ourselves. Almost 50% of Republican voters now call themselves Christian evangelicals. Today, Christians in America who support Zionism are the largest potential base of support for Israel's interests in the USA, numbering at least 30 million. This, plus the US lobby for Israel with its multi-million dollar budget, are two key factors that make the US-Israel relationship really unique on Capitol Hill. Paul Finley former U.S. congressman. The third is that U.S. citizens are systematically deprived of access to the real facts. The American media plays an important role by leaving out vast swathes of information. It is the classic case of lying through omission. These combined forces are capable of bringing significant political and economic pressure on every vote in the Senate and the House. Every year since 1973, the United States has been giving Israel approximately three billion dollars. Out of which 1.2 billion is economic and 1.8 billion is military aid, making Israel the highest recipient of per capita aid in the world. So anyway, we were expecting to be raptured in 1981, but when it didn't happen, I wasn't too worried. Because by then I was so happy bringing up my children with, and my British husband and I were very successful with our business here in the UK. We lived a privileged life. Then in 1988, I met a Palestinian for the very first time in my life at a Christian conference. He was an Anglican vicar from Nablus, and he told us the story of his family in the Nakba and what had taken place. Well, up until then, I had thought all Palestinians were terrorists. I had no idea that Palestinian Christians existed. I didn't understand the displacement of the Palestinian people when Israel was established, because we thought it was an empty land for people without a home. I was stunned. I was reading every book I could get my hands on and stayed out reading until two in the morning. And I was crying and crying and crying and thinking the whole foundation of my life had been shaken. And since that time, I have not stopped reading and researching, meeting people from both sides of the conflict. And my life has profoundly changed. Now I take groups on study tours to expose people to the truth of what is happening on the ground, hoping to raise awareness with a view to creating pressure for change and a just solution for both people groups. 
There are justice issues here concerning universal human rights and international law.